Good evening, hello and welcome. You're watching CNN News 18. This is Nation at 5 with me, Poonam Burde. There's lots lined up for you on this edition, but let's get you started with a super exclusive that we have for you here on CNN News 18. And it comes as a no surprise that Pakistan is back to its dirty tricks. Once again, trying to foment trouble in Jammu and Kashmir, clearly rattled at the fact that there are absolutely no takers for their propaganda, especially in the Kashmir Valley. We're now learning from our sources within the intel agencies that Pakistan and its proxies are trying to revive the soft separatist movement in Jammu and Kashmir. They want to time it to the 2024 elections next year. Not realizing that all of these attempts are going to be thwarted like every single infiltration bid has been, like every single terror funding nexus has been broken. All of that will continue happening, unfortunately, for Pakistan. They clearly have uh, no lessons learned from past experiences. They keep trying to funnel money into exercises like these, which have absolutely no effect as far as uh, Jammu and Kashmir goes. Let's take you through what is this exclusive that we've accessed as far as... Uh, what our intel sources have now told us. Let's take a look at what exactly Pakistan and its proxies are trying uh, to do. What Pakistan and its proxies are trying to do is that they are desperate enough to start some sort of a soft movement, a soft separatist movement in Jammu and Kashmir ahead of elections next year. Their failure in pushing terror across the line of control, across the line, uh, international border, is clearly rattling them, which is why now they're trying to revive the Kashmir Liberation Front, the JKLF. There is an attempt to try and revive that organization as well. There is a push that is being made to ensure that these kind of uh, instances of hartals, of stone peltings, which have now almost come down to nil after the abrogation especially, are still wanting to try and foment trouble there. There is a bid to restart the separatist movement before 2024 elections. That's what we're learning. This is the kind of uh, attempt that they're trying to make to organize small protests, to keep the separatism alive, to try and organize... Uh uh, hartals and stone pelting, all of that is being organized at a particular meeting, the meeting that was on the radar of our agencies and was duly thwarted. The JNK police arrested 10 ex-terrorists and separatists. They were in Srinagar. They were trying to organize themselves, mobilize themselves. There was a meeting that was held at a Srinagar hotel. We're already on the radar of the JNK police, of the international, uh, of uh, the intel agencies, which is why they were all arrested. The bid was that a democratic political movement, an affiliate of the Hurriyat, was trying to mobilize the youth, was trying to mobilize what are called overground workers to try and revive this kind of movement. There was two months of planning that actually went behind organizing this particular event is what we're trying to learn now. Detained separatists that arrested ones are now trying to revive JKLF is also what the JNK police suspects. All 10 of them have now been booked under the un, uh, uh, have now been booked under the section 121A of UAPA. So clearly, all such attempts by Pakistan finding no takers in Jammu and Kashmir, they've always been on the radar of our intelligence agencies, of our security agencies, and none of these attempts will bear any fruit. Anand Narsimhan, my colleague, joins us, gets us the latest as far as... Uh, the Dirty Tricks Department of Pakistan goes and it comes as no surprise. Their uh, infiltration bids are failing. They have no takers as far as their uh, international narrative goes. They have no money for their own failing economy. So desperate attempts being made now. Yes, it is. But one, one point that we need to remember is that they may be going to the cleaners in terms of economic penury is concerned. But there is still a division within the establishment that wants to keep its Kashmir intent alive. And they are trying to pull whatever limited resources they have towards uh, pushing this entire agenda there uh, on, on into Jammu and Kashmir. But what they want to do is, one of the things since the abrogation of Article 370 and which the government has also gone ahead and shown to the world, is the fact that there is no stone, stone pelting, there are no hartals, schools are functioning, colleges are functioning, shops and establishments are open, and there is a huge amount of economic inflow and of course progress that has been witnessed. Now this is something which is irking because what would be the norm would be months and months of lockdown uh, earlier uh, in, in, the, in the previous erstwhile regime around the time when Article 370 was still in place. Now, they want to revive this entire stone pelting incidents, violence, hartals, etc. and create trouble ahead of the 2024 elections. But the establishment or Jammu and Kashmir government and administration and the security infrastructure alert to these kind of moves. But what's interesting, Poonam, is to see that those people who were terrorists uh, earlier, those who are actively involved in the separatist agenda are now trying to enter the mainstream, use names which sound very democratic, 
they sound political but they are actually separatist they are not democratic and they are secessionist so these kind of activities have been activated and that is something which we need to be wise about and uh, this is a move which now has been thwarted the attempt to try and also subvert the system using the system so that attempt now has been thwarted but it's taking them time to organize interestingly they took two months to organize this and they could gather only a handful of people that itself shows that their entire currency itself is on the way in 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 jammu and kashmir so that is also another aspect and it's paucity of funds that we've seen because of the crackdown that has happened on terror funding the kind of arrests that have been made the properties that have been seized by multiple agencies in jammu and kashmir in the recent past they're clearly feeling the heat of all of that there's absolutely no money to mobilize the people that they would like to do yes the money is not coming from uh, pakistan money is not coming via the drug routes the, or at least the, it has dried up what they are actually sending you are uh, packets of heroin via drones that's and they're saying you sell it and then you make money so that's the level to which pakistan or the suppliers on the other side the enemy lines are are cash trapped here also because all, a lot of their properties which were benami lot of their uh, assets which they had held on to and which they used to liquidate or they used to use to monetize they have been clamped down the entire infrastructure has been clamped down entities who were working within the jammu and kashmir administration and government and helping them and and also giving them uh, plum postings and also passing them doles on various reasons and funding them to come back and again once again attack the system itself using the system's money to subvert the system like i said that attempt also has dried up so you are right when you say that there is not money plus also those entities or those people who earlier used to fuel these people out of fear have stopped because their own businesses are running very well their own life have come back on track and they do they don't want to have any truck or business because the state today is standing with those who are who are not standing with the separatists earlier there used to be a soft backing or a tacit backing that's the allegation to these separatist elements by the state or the political establishment itself with that changing i think the mood also on ground has changed and they all, nobody wants hartals nobody wants stone pelting nobody wants their child to be pick up by picking up stones and throwing at others so all of that also is changing uh, is is also a reason that these people their ground itself is uh, receding with each passing day Anand, thank you so much for that. There are clearly no troubled waters to fish in anymore for Pakistan because Jammu and Kashmir is embracing the real integration has begun since the abrogation of Article 370. The change is being seen by every single person that lives there in the valley. We've seen the kind of development that has come to the fore. The fact that. Uh, uh G- g20 uh, summits were held there the fact that several of these businesses are looking to invest in jammu and kashmir a lot is being done for the valley which is why there is absolutely no place even in the minds of the people there that they could turn away from india towards pakistan or its proxies